Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Today, I want to talk about websites. So if you want a website, I would, I would recommend listening in because I want to talk to you about the details of it, um, particularly some, you know, tips, um, what it takes to actually run, run one, and all these other small details, okay, that a lot of people wonder about. It's always, again, another buzzword around because while Etsy is fantastic, love Etsy, love Amazon, it's always smart that if this is actually your business and this is actually what you do to feed your family or help support your family and all that good stuff, then you should definitely have it. You know, definitely have a website. But it's not as simple as, okay, Dahlia said so, I'm going to open a website and watch the money roll in. It doesn't work that way. Not even close. So I want to talk to you about... Um, Websites, the options you have to open one, also how to run one, also how to bring traffic to it. That's the biggest thing. The reason why Etsy works so well is because you could open a shop and technically get traffic fairly fairly quickly, um, especially especially if you have fantastic SEO. You know, I always talk about SEO, um, great pictures and a great product, okay? Let me adjust my seat here. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the idea of getting the traffic that becomes so difficult. I definitely want to talk about that today. And while I talk about it, I want, to, want you to understand, I'm not going to give anybody a magic solution, right? However, I might provide some insight that might help you understand it further. And this really will um, piggyback on what I talked about yesterday. Okay? Turn my sound down. I listened to yesterday's video and all the sounds over the road were what you were saying, so I don't mean to be rude. What do you mean, turn my sound down? Hold on. I can't turn it down. I can only turn my ringtone down. Isn't that weird? I'm sorry about that. I don't think she'd be able to hear anything over here. It's strange. Susan, if you could elaborate, I would like to know. I want to make sure everybody has correct sound over here. Good morning. Um, oh, that's weird, Trina. I'm glad you found me. Good morning. Good morning. So before I begin, I have something really exciting to show you. Okay. Um, so, quick question, everybody. Is my sound okay? Is my sound okay for everybody's liking? Um, I don't have any background noise around me here, so I think it should be fine. So, anyway, I bought something really cool. I want to show it to you. And I just want to show it to you. <laughs> now, here's a, here's a reason why I bought it. Because I've been Facebook living for a long time. And I know many of you guys enjoy it. However, sometimes there are some technical issues, right? And I, I'm not a stranger to understanding that I should eventually fix it, but I was lacking the knowledge to how to fix it. Like, you know what? This is my phone. This is how it's in a roll. Not the best quality. We know it's a phone. You know, if I could do my Facebook lives on my Canon, you know, HD camera, that'd be fantastic, but I can't, right? However, I found a really great thing that I want to share with you. And I'm only sharing with you because I'm just excited that I have it. And I want you to be excited too because it's going to affect you and my Facebook lives. So I purchased, based on a recommendation, this webcam. So I have a laptop. I actually have several computers as well. And the, the camera there is not top notch, right? It's only a laptop. Um, and even a lot of built in cameras are really not top notch. And I got, was recommended by somebody who does a lot of, um, live streaming sort of things, right? Similar to me. And they have fantastic quality. And they told me, hey, this is what I have. It's really just a plug and play. And what's going to happen is this. I will plug this in to my laptop. And I found out a way, which is kind of like a little programming way I did, a little technical, to allow me to do Facebook Live from my computer. So I'll have a fantastic um, quality video and you guys get to see it as well. Um, and I'm also, it's coming in the mail very soon. I'm getting a mic because um, I usually use this mic when I do my recording of webinars and they're okay. it's okay, it's fine, but um, time to step it up a notch. So I purchased a mic that are very, it's also very highly used for people that do webinars and things like that, but I'll be using it also for Facebook Live. Point being is that when I do the Facebook Lives and I do live stream, it'll be from this camera, so great quality, 
And of course, it will also be great quality voice, which many of you didn't have a problem with the voice, usually with a quality camera. And many of you had a problem with me streaming from my phone because it would interrupt, etc. Now, I'll be streaming from my laptop, which would be a thousand times better, okay? Again, it's not something that you can't actually do normally. I have to do some programming in order for me to get it done. But you should be able to see that starting about a week or so. I'm waiting for the mic to come on in, okay? So again, just excited to share my new toy, and I'll let you know when I start streaming from it. I think you'll be able to obviously tell the difference, okay? Very excited. All right, so moving on, websites. So, and if you have questions about websites, go ahead and post them as I'm, you know, talking about it. But I want to start off the way I think we should start off. A lot of us want one, we want a website, but we just don't know where to start. And obviously, where to start is actually opening it up getting a .com, right, purchasing a .com, and using a platform to build it. So you can get .coms from anywhere. A lot of places sell it. Um, I don't particularly recommend one in particular, but I've used GoDaddy and I've used Namecheap.com. I found that Namecheap is actually significantly less when you're buying many, many years. I tend to buy many, many years, like five plus years for my name, probably even more if I could. Um, so I know I could guarantee that name for a very long time. And I found that when I go to namecheap.com, it is, um, it came out to be significantly cheaper, not too much, but definitely worth for me to go to them instead of GoDaddy. Okay. I don't know the difference. I'm just buying the .com from them. Okay. Now that's the first part, right? You get your .com, you own it. For many of you, I would not, bear with me as I say this, Okay. Because we're so busy, including myself, I would not recommend getting a website built on WordPress. And here's why. I have mine on WordPress, okay? And I'll explain to you why in a moment. However, to keep it up, and if you're not at all tech savvy, at all, then I would definitely not go with it. While if you are on WordPress.org, you own your site. So for example, if you go to Shopify, if you go to Wix or wherever you want to go to, you technically don't fully, fully own it. It's a hosting on their platform. It's similar to Etsy, but it's not, okay? Um, meaning there are some rules and regulations that te te technically get you shut down, so you don't own it. On WordPress, you own it. You shut yourself down if you want to, okay? However, I still would recommend places like Shopify and Wix because there is still some ownership for your website um, as opposed to Etsy. Now, the reason why, again, I don't want you to go full blown to WordPress is because with our lack of time, who has time really to invest in building, unless you hire somebody to do it, which costs a lot of money, right? That's you know point number one, but also upkeeping it. At this moment, I have a WordPress site. Literally at this moment, I can show you right now, my assistant is uploading products to my WordPress. It is not that difficult, okay? I learned it. It's very similar when you learn a new platform such as Amazon, okay? However, um, yes, it does become too much when it, ha it goes through updates, etc. It's a little, it's a little annoying because I don't know what to do. You know, I will sometimes have to pay somebody to do the updates for me to make sure everything's working properly, etc. Point being is that while you could learn your way through WordPress. I'm only doing it because I have a team of people, right? It works that way. However, if you don't, which many of us don't, or if you have a part-time, it doesn't really count, right? It could be very difficult. I highly recommend going straight to Shopify, okay? And I also say this because people think that it's cheaper to go on WordPress. And I have to disagree. I have WordPress and I pay for certain things. I pay for... PayPal Payments Pro, which is $30 a month, which allows me to integrate my payments on my website. So it doesn't look like you're paying through PayPal, it looks like you're paying through a regular credit card system, which I prefer. Um, so if you have, you have to pay for a payment gateway, and it's the same as paying Shopify $30, $40 a month, right? But it's obviously much easier to keep up, you know? Yeah, I have WordPress as well, and I think, again, it's working just fine for me. But I have to think the bigger picture for everybody else out there. I'm not really sure if my recommendation would be, would make sense for everybody, you know, um, because it could be hard to keep up and a few other things. 
Nonetheless, you have to pick the platform that's right for you. Do the research, see what works best. Again, when you're on WordPress, you fully, fully, fully own it. It requires you to be a little bit more tech savvy, right? A little bit more. Um, and there's a few other things. However, Shopify, you could build it yourself. You could hire somebody to build it as well. Um, you could build it yourself. It's much easier. Um, there's a lot of templates you could use. You could adjust it, obviously, but it's a lot easier to keep up with, okay? Um, you know, Lisa, Lisa said Shopify, she tried it. It seemed tricky. However, and I understand that every new platform you might seem tricky or some easier than others. I find that it happens often with a lot. If you get Shopify and you try their free trial, I would definitely try it. It's 14 days. I would definitely try it for almost every single day for 14 days. And if you need to extend it, you can actually call them. They'll extend it for you, the free trial, if you need more time. But sometimes it takes getting used to any new platform. I will be honest with you. When I first got WordPress, got it, I avoided it like the plague. My website launched several months ago. I avoided updating it at all. And then here's what happened. My assistant told me she gave her two-week notice. And I was like, what? What am I going to do? What am I going to have her work on that's so, so important for these last two weeks? What was the most important thing on my list? My website and updating it. I had to get new products up there because at the time my website launched, I had a whole bunch of new products launched as well. So I said, okay, for two weeks, she'll be working on uploading products. And therefore, that's what she's doing right now. Point is, I had to sit down and look at the training video my web designer did for me to see how I upload products. I realized it wasn't that scary. I had to kind of go through it. I had to kind of practice a little bit, but it wasn't as scary. Okay. I will tell you that I'm not a fan personally of Wix. I'm not a fan. Okay. It, it works for a lot of people and that's fine, but I just, there are some restrictions. Okay. So, Let's move on. You pick a platform, right? The biggest topic here is, okay, Daddy, I got a platform, even if it's a shitty platform, even if it's an okay platform, no matter what platform you use, it's okay to start with the platform and then upgrade later, right? If you try Wix and you're like, I'm, gro I'm growing out of this. I'm going to go to Shopify. I'm going to go to WordPress because you can obviously do that. You can have a Shopify site and transfer everything to WordPress. It's fine. So you could upgrade it later. But the point of this topic is most people struggle with, now I have a website. Nobody's coming to it. What do I do, right? So, um, I, I want to say that, you know, how we talked about email lists yesterday, the whole topic. And if you're listening to this and you're like, what are you talking about? Make sure you check out my Facebook live from yesterday. We talked about email lists. That is a fantastic way, fantastic way to drive traffic to your dot com. Okay. Now it's easier said than done, right? because there's a lot more to it to drive traffic. But you would have and grow this email list of yours that would essentially grow and grow and grow. So when you send out an email, right? And remember we talked yesterday about enticing email, get something to click, etc. will bring traffic to the site. The more you grow that list, right? Work on growing that list, the more potential buyers you'll have, right? Every time you send them to the site, okay? Um, so just think about it this way, that while there is SEO and all this other stuff to drive traffic to your website, one thing you cannot forget is the traffic that is much more valuable. The ones that said, hey, I'm interested in your product, right? That already said that, okay? Because they opted into your email list. They either purchased from you before, they want to purchase from you, so they sign up for your email list, etc. okay? <clears throat> Trina says, how do you advertise when you have multiple platforms? So are you talking about money advertising? Are you talking about, let's say, Facebook ads, etc.? Is that what you're asking? If you're asking that, if you have your .com set up, your own website, I would, I'm, again, I'm not sure if you're asking this, but I'm going to answer it. Only advertise them to the .com. Why would you keep sending them to Etsy? No offense to Etsy. I love Etsy. It's why I'm in business right now. But at the end of the day, you want to funnel them, funnel them to your .com. When I have my repeat customers, not all of them, not quite yet, but they do go head over to either email me or go to my .com. That's what you want to do. So when you advertise, you pick this one platform. If you don't have a .com yet and you want to advertise, um, absolutely send them to Etsy. That's fine, you know, but it's only important to send them to the one that you own fully. Okay. Um, because again, something happens to your Amazon, something happens to your Etsy, you still have your .com. 
Okay, essentially, technically speaking, because Etsy and Amazon have transaction fees, you know, um, your .com will not. It will just have your payment fees, right, which is normal. And sometimes, depending on what kind of plan you have, you might not. It just depends. But that's what you want to do. I hope I answered your question, Trina. Sorry. Um, so, again, there's a lot more to it than just say, say, saying, okay, I got a website, Daddy told me to build an email list to drive traffic. It will take some patience and it will take some time, okay? Because, what, let's say if I have a list of a thousand people, not bad, right? Not a lot, but not bad, right? Pretty good. Every time I send out an email, you know that not every person on that list is gonna be sent to the website. And then after that, not every person is gonna purchase. That's why it's called a funnel. Eventually it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You wanna keep bringing them over there because not all of them will end up purchasing, okay? Then the small amount will, you know? So um, you have my, your WordPress pointing to Etsy. That's fine, Trina, right? And hopefully eventually over time, you build out your WordPress or whatever it is, Shopify or whatever, to not point to Etsy, to have your own products there, okay? Um, you know, another few ways to do it is obviously put in, um, to drive traffic to your website is when you, um, sorry, when you send a package to Sally, right, your customer, send a package, there is a postcard in there that tells her, hey, you just launched your .com, head over there for the best offers and deals or whatever, whatever. And that's what I put in my packages currently. In fact, let me go get it really quick. Hold on. Let me show you what I have in my packages. Hold on. Hello. Guys, so this is what I have. So, okay, so they get this little postcard. I'm not sure if you see it backwards or not, but it says handmade just for you, right? Cute, right? Um, I saw this idea somewhere, maybe on Pinterest. And then, again, I'm not sure if it's backwards, but I will read it to you. It says, thank you for your purchase. I'm excited to announce the launch of modernpainpaper.com. This is the only place online to find modern pen paper products for the best pricing on stationery and shipping. Plus, it's so easy to use because obviously Etsy is a little bit more complicated for customers, okay? This in my .com, they have a place to put their personalization, all this other stuff. You know, they can see the ink and envelope colors, they could choose it, it's really cool. So I put this in there. So I'm pretty, again, driving traffic to my .com. There is, of course, many other ways. If you have social media platforms, all your profiles should have your .com link. Um, you should regularly post to p tell people to check out your .com, etc. There's definitely other ways to do it, but these are just a few tips. Building an email list is one of the major ways. Social media, another major way. Um, uh, advertising, another major way. And of course, last but certainly not least, SEO, okay? Now let's talk about SEO just for a second on the website, okay? Good morning, good morning. So, um... There's, there's many, so it just depends on the platform, okay? WordPress versus Shopify, there's, there's ways to optimize your listings, your shop regarding SEO. So I can't give you a definitive answer here because there are, um, it, it depends on the platform. So for example, um, most platforms, if I'm not mistaken, not Etsy and Amazon, you could name your images something. You should name them special keywords so people could find you and search for your products, including the alt text, which is, again, maybe some crazy talk for some of you, but um, it's pretty much SEO for your photos. Whoever, who has heard of SEO for photos? That's what the alt text is, okay? Again, depending on what platform you use, it may not be smart. Ken says, I'm using Pattern by Etsy as my .com at the moment. I don't have time to work on Etsy shop as well as a website. Understand, absolutely understand. Um, you don't have time. Do what makes sense for you, and eventually, if you have the time, upgrade, right? Because eventually, you want to have your own, not sitting on Etsy. I'll be honest, okay? You want to have your own, not sitting on Etsy. So, um, so then another point of SEO is titles, right? Description inside your listing that's on your .com. Again, depending on the platform you use, there's also um, you could also do blog posts on there that drive traffic other ways and eventually they see your shop as well. Again, there's many, many different ways. However, whatever way you decide to do to bring traffic, 
there has to be a plan. You know, I love planning, right? There has to be a plan. In fact, actually, my computer's outside. I don't want to interrupt my um, my assistants, but I literally have my plan right in front of me because I'm working on some things with the website. We're checking off as we go the things that we accomplish because while I'm pretty successful at my dot-com launch, soon pretty good, I just, I want to, of course, supercharge it. So I have some things in place that allow me to work on supercharging it. And it's all about driving traffic to it, okay? And growing my email list even more rapidly than I am now. It's not doing so bad, my growth of my email list, but I want to grow grow it even more, etc. So I have some plans in place. And I, I urge you, while it's fun to have a dot-com launch and fix up whatever, the next step, it doesn't have to happen immediately, but the next step is, what am I going to do to drive traffic? Again, I mentioned a few things to you here. While I mentioned them to you, they obviously require work, a lot of work, each thing I mentioned, right? So you have to do the research to see how do you get there. So Brooke asks, is pattern a good option, you think? My personal opinion, it is not. Here is why. It's still bringing people to the Etsy shop, right? Your dot com. It's, it's still owned by Etsy, right? The purpose For me, the purpose of having your own dot com is to have it something that you own, right? And that you could design the way your branding should, you should look. Pattern does not do those, either the, both of those things. You don't own it and can design it the way you want. Pattern, you're out. That's what I think, okay? So Angela goes, I've been using Trello by your suggestion and I'm in love. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of um, platforms you could use to plan out. Whatever thing you choose, because here's the thing, guys. You want, you want how crazy I am? You know, I'm a, I'm a person that loves paper and pen, right? Everybody knows that. In fact, Angela was speaking to me yesterday about what a pen snob I am, because I am. Anyway, even though you might find the cheapest of cheapest pens in my office, sometimes even the best pens, nonetheless... I plan three. I plan a few different ways. Okay, my planning process is a little bit more complicated because of things I have to work on. However, it all starts with a pen and paper. I know that sounds ridiculous. It all starts with a pen and paper. I jot down things. I move it over to Trello. I organize, etc. Either way, even if you don't want to get too complicated, I recommend getting on a piece of paper and pen. Just jot down. Okay. What do I suggest? Are you talking about for pen? <laughs> Are you talking about for pen book or are um, you talking about for planning in like a platform to plan? Where's my tea? Let me know what you mean. I'm a pen snob. I'd love to show you my collection of pens if people want to ask. I have quite a bit. I think if I go out there and show you my collection of pens, my assistants would laugh at me. Okay. <laughs> uh, platform is the best for simplicity. Um, you know. I mean, you can make simplicity of use. Um, I would, uh, you know, I don't use every platform, so it's hard for me to say, but I think um, Shopify, Squarespace, BigCommerce, all those are easier than a WordPress as far as simplicity is concerned. However, there are some people, diehard WordPress friends that it, because they're so used to the platform, it makes it easy for them. But again, if you have no experience with that, I'd recommend a Shopify or something, okay? Knowing pens is good too. <laughs> you can move it over to what after paper. Oh, I move it over to Trello after paper. Okay. And um, there's a few other things I might do depending on what the task is. But the simplest thing for me to say is I move it over to Trello. And it's the way I organize it. I am, I'm, as you guys know, I'm relaunching the blog very soon. I'm actually putting a blog post on Trello. Um, and I would love to show you how I use it, you know, that'll be really exciting. And by the way, with the live streaming I'm going to do on my computer very soon with my little web camera, I'll be able to actually live stream my face, which is normal, and then live stream my computer, which is really, really awesome. Okay. Um, my problem with jotting down is that it gets so bogged down and things get lost in the list. I never organize a jotting down sheet. Yes, you have to organize it. So Trello had been a life changer to create a task. Um, and, and put the steps to reach that goal. Awesome. Do you use Google AdWords? Um, are you talking about like to search keywords, Kristen, or are you talking about to actually place ads? Or do you talk, are you talking about advertising and me collecting dollars for advertising? Is that what you're asking me? I forget. I don't know exactly what you're asking me, Kristen. Let me know. Um, 
watch Trello, Lisa. I would recommend, Lisa, go to Trello.com, take a look at it. I would also recommend going to YouTube and write how to use Trello and see what people do with it. Just kind of get used to it. It's a project management system. It's really fantastic. Okay? The website part scares you. I know. I know, Brooke. Because it scares me. And just recently, like I said, when my assistant told me that she's giving her two-week notice, I had to put some fire up my butt and get used to my website and then teach her and upload products. And I got over it. I got over it. Okay? So. Um, awesome, Lisa. Oh, yeah, I know bulleting. I know what bullet journaling is. Definitely. I think it's awesome as well. So, guys, let me wrap this topic up, okay? Um, talked about websites. And again, you might not want to do it tomorrow. You know, I'm talking about planning as I usually do. There should be a plan for you. When is your website going to launch? Is it going to launch? If it's not, that's fine. But if you ha if this is your business, you have to know that a website eventually should launch, right? Then, I know it sounds scary right now, but you're like, I can launch a website, but I don't know how to get traffic. It's so much work, so much work. I get it. I get it. Believe me, right? Not only do I coach you guys and help you, I'm, I'm living it just like you. I'm living it just like you. I get it. It scares the shit out of me. In fact, you know what else scares the shit out of me? My assistant's about to leave me in two weeks, right? Less than two weeks. I have to hire somebody else. That scares me, right? A lot of this stuff scares me, but it has to be done, right? So you have to at least make a plan, maybe not for this year, for next year, when you're going to work on this website, when you're going to carve out some time slowly it doesn't have to be overnight guys who cares if it takes you three four five months to do it as long as it's getting done right plan it out do the research see which platform you're going to go on do the research to buy your dot com blah 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 blah. all the stuff do the research how you're going to upload your products eventually when it's fully fully up then you just have to research of how you're going to start driving traffic there are you really building your email list there's, there's pieces to it and while this may seem overwhelming and it is there's no doubt that you know it has to happen. So what are you waiting for? Again, I told you I'm currently in a debate with my husband about when I'm going to hire my next person. It's very difficult for me, guys. It's very, very difficult for me. Again, I'm living it just like you. And I actually don't know the answer to that yet. I don't know when I'm going to hire a next person, you know? But I know it's probably going to happen. I am getting my pictures professionally done. Do you know the appropriate size for a website? I know I suggest them to be 7, 570 pixel. Please help since they're being formatted now. So it depends on the website and the plugins you use. However, I, I think that what you are doing with the Etsy one, I think it should be just fine. Cause I'm using my, I'm using my Etsy photos on my website and they're doing just fine. You know? Yeah. Just use it to whatever you feel comfortable with using paper and pen, using Trello, whatever it is, guys. You know, it's not because I'm scared of big bad Etsy's and shut me down one day, but it is your livelihood. You need to have your dot com. You need to, if you start to grow, you need to get charged less and less transaction fees. Guys, you know how much, you know how much I sell on, on, on Amazon and Etsy and blah, 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 blah. I sell a lot, right? There's, there's no, there's no, it's not a secret. And while every time I look at my Etsy bill that comes through, I don't cringe anymore. It's normal, right? It's, it's like thousands, literally it's thousands every month and while it's very normal I think to myself how much money could I be saving you know I'm not an idiot you know it's it's not about just running a business and getting sales it's also about making sure your expenses are low so you can make a profit it's all about profit if I made no profit I would not even be here right so thinking about that also I should have to grow right and while that may not seem realistic now because you're like yeah, yeah I don't make that much I make two thousand dollars a month transaction fees are not that much I'll be okay on Etsy Please, please, please just write it down, right? Writing it down is half the battle, okay? Yeah, Lisa, I, that's, I'll talk to you guys about it another day because I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Um, your whole weekend was spent on .com. You know, I love that, Bethany, because what I found and I told my husband is that now every day he goes to the gym, which is three days a week or four days a week, I forgot, he's going to take the kids with him and I'm going to work. Those are my extra working time. I do have to work extra now that my assistant's leaving until further notice. And I accepted that and I'm okay with it, you know? And just like Beth, Bethany spent the weekend working on her .com, I was spending extra hours as well working on things to help grow my business because I'm lacking a person. And she does a lot around here. Thank you for the pics info, Dahlia. 
Um, things happen for a reason, Dahlia, and all will happen at the perfect time. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, you are welcome, Jennifer. Well, I'm about to end, actually end this topic, so if you just joined me recently, make sure you rewatch this and listen up, okay? Because if I did not give you certain actions to take, at least I gave you the motivation to get out there and get this website done. And I hate to bring it up, but again, you don't own platforms like Etsy or Amazon, right? And for whatever reason, they could shut you down. And again, I hate to stir that up in people because not, it's not only the reason why you want to have your own .com. It's not the only reason, but essentially that's what's the most popular reason to have .com is for because you own it, right? And it's really, really important that if this is your business, that you don't deny the fact that you need a .com, right? Don't deny it. First, accept it. And then say, what are the steps? Write it down. You don't have to open it tomorrow. Write the steps down, what you need to do, right? It's all about attacking it one piece at a time, okay? So, guys, I'm going to let you guys go, but I will see you tomorrow. Just remember, yesterday was Mastermind Monday, but I forgot to post it. I'm a human, right? So I posted it today. It's a belated Mastermind Monday. So if you probably check a few posts down below or above me, you'd probably see that the Mastermind, Mon Mastermind Monday post is up. So if you have any questions about websites or anything in general, please feel free to post. And just remember, you don't have to always post your questions only on Mastermind Monday. It can be posted anytime. But I do like those threads because people could literally look through this one thread and see a lot of things that they can gain knowledge from. That's, what, that's, what, that's why I'm doing it. Okay? So... I will check you guys later. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.